You will hear a woman asking a shop assistant about DVD players. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 1 to 4. Hello, I'm interested in buying a DVD player. Can you help me, as I don't know very much about them? Of course. We sell quite a range. Actually, we're doing a customer survey at the moment, so I wonder if I could fill in this form about you, and that will actually help me to advise you on the best DVD player for you. Oh, OK. <laughs> First of all, your occupation. Um, student. OK. Then, have you already got a DVD player? Uh, no, I've never had one before. Uh-huh. And how much do you think you want to spend on a player? Mm, I'm not sure, really. But I have got a budget. My friend said I should allow about £100. But I can't afford over £85, so that's what I'm working on. Mm-hmm. And... Do you watch DVDs very often? Um, depends what you mean by often. I don't know what the norm is. Is it about two a week? Uh, I suppose I watch three a month. That's enough for me. Yes. <laughs> what sort of films do you like watching then? Action movies? <laughs> Not really. Oh. My boyfriend always insists we watch science fiction movies, but... I prefer thrillers. Something to get your teeth into. OK. Just one more. Do you watch other DVDs? Ones that are not films, like music or something? Not much, because I don't want to spend the money on something I can watch on TV. But I occasionally rent out comedy programmes. And I fight with my boyfriend over all the sports DVDs he watches. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 5 to 10. OK, let me explain a bit to you about the DVD players that are in your price range. First, there's the DB30, which has only got basic features, but it is a bargain at £69. Now, all the DVDs come with an after-sales service that starts when the guarantee runs out. As it's so cheap, the DB30 comes with a limited after-sales service, as it only includes parts. You would have to pay for most of the repair. Oh, mm, seems OK. Mm. Then a slight grade up from that is the XL643. This comes with an additional feature in that it has an extra button allowing you to record. That's quite useful. Oh, yes. That would mean spending less on DVDs to watch. Yes. So you'd make the extra money back on it that it costs. Mm. Let me see how much it is. Uh, ah, yes. That one's actually reduced at the moment from £79 to £71.99. Oh. I think it's worth the extra myself. And is that the same level of after-sales service as the other one? Well, you get a bit more for your money because what we're offering is a discount on labour. So you don't pay the full price if you have to call an engineer out. I see. Then the last one is this Tri-X 24. It's a very good player and you can use it to listen to your CDs as well as watch DVDs. Mm, it looks nice, but 
I bet it's expensive. No, it's not top of the range. Let's see. Yes, it's ninety-four pounds. But what you have to remember is that that includes insurance, so you don't have to pay extra for that. And it comes with a guarantee that's valid for three years, as opposed to the usual one. What do you think? Hmm. Maybe. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a female and a male student talking to a female tutor about a self-evaluation form. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to sixteen. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Now, Mark and Anna, I have to say that I thoroughly enjoyed your joint presentation on the application of robotics in a non-industrial setting to the group on the 2nd of December, and it is clear that you have both devoted quite a lot of time and effort to it. Have you had a chance to fill in the self-evaluation form for the session? Yeah, we have. So, Mark, what do you think overall? Well, generally, I felt the presentation worked very well. In fact, we seemed to hold the attention of the others throughout. And the pace of delivery was fairly even, as were the range of activities we organised. I agree with Mark, but I'm not sure we were comprehensive or academic enough. No comment, really, except that I don't think there was any question of it not being thorough. I think we were a bit too chatty and too jokey at times, rather than formal. OK, what do you think were the best areas? And which do you think can be improved on? Well, everything could have been improved on. I felt very good about the handouts. We'd spent a lot of time putting them together. They had a very professional appearance as we bound them into a booklet. To me, the handouts were the best part, as we had a very extensive bibliography and the booklet seemed to go down well. The booklet you did for the handout certainly showed you had done a lot of work. But I think that you put too much material into it, and people got distracted by it. Perhaps you could have cut the handouts by about a third. I see. When I come to think about it, maybe you're right. OK. But there were times in the middle of the presentation where things did go a bit astray. I think that was my fault when I got the PowerPoint slides out of sequence and I had difficulty getting back on track. Mm. I also think we rated our technical ability too highly, especially when operating under pressure. I had never done a presentation with technical equipment before, so it was a steep learning curve for me in particular. Yes, I think you could have done with a bit more practice with the equipment beforehand. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. What about the next item on the feedback form? The aims and objectives? I think they were very focused and we followed them through well, I think. 
We wanted to show how Europe was lagging behind other areas of the world. Yeah, I think they were clearly set out. Yes, agreed. No comment there. The diagrams and charts were appropriate. Yes, I have put that too. They did work well in helping to illustrate and break up the presentation by cutting down on the number of words and text on the screen. What about delivery? Well, I think our performance was average. It was difficult to coordinate speaking and presenting the material at the same time. I was quite self-conscious of what I was doing. It was down to a lack of experience. Unfortunately, both of you had the habit of standing in front of the projector, so you kept blocking the image on the screen. To me, this is the area that requires the most improvement. The section on the predictions of the commercial application in the future, I think, appeared a bit haphazard. Uh, to me, it was a weak point of the presentation. And I think that some of the slides could have had fewer words. And we could have done some fancy graphics with the words. If you had to give yourselves a mark overall, how much would you give out of ten? Six, maybe. I'd be happy with that. Though bits were probably nearer a seven. So I'd say a six. Anna, what do you think? I think for me it's perhaps a seven. OK. Did you find the task and the evaluation useful? That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a talk on local radio about a short film festival in the town of Adborn. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Today we're pleased to have on the show Fatima Johnson, who is the organiser of the Adborn Film Festival. Welcome, Fatima. Hello. Can you tell us a bit about the background to the festival and what it brings to the town? Well, the festival was started in 1996 by the then mayor of Adborn, Joanne Smith. She wasn't a filmmaker herself. She'd actually been a very energetic tourism development officer for many years. But Adborn had run a classical music festival, which had been becoming less and less popular in recent years. Joanne was looking around for something to replace it and to use funds allocated to it to promote something which local people can enjoy. <laughs> Great. So tell us about the festival nowadays. Well, it's held in the last two weeks of August every year and short films from all over the world are shown in three places, uh, in the theatre and our two cinemas. Several films are shown in one performance and the whole thing lasts about 90 minutes. Tickets are very reasonably priced. Under 12s used to get in for 50p, but now we charge just £1, which is still very good value. £1.50 for students and £2.50 for everyone else. Performances are advertised all round town and also on our website, www.adbornfest.com. If you're interested in attending any performance, you can buy tickets online, of course, and you can also get them in the library, which is right next to the main shopping area. 
I'm afraid this year tickets are no longer available from either of the two cinemas because of restricted opening times. Oh, I understand you also run a film competition? Yes, for under-18s. We have a different theme every year. Last year, for example, the theme was Future Planet, and the winner was a ten-minute documentary encouraging youngsters to be more aware of environmental issues, focusing on getting school kids to cycle to school instead of going by car. This year, the theme is Sporting Nation, so there'll also be lots of ideas to choose from. Now, we're always on the lookout for new local talent, so if you live in the Adbourne area and are under 18, you should have a go. We have an excellent prize every year donated by local businesses, shops, hotels, etc. This year, you can win a high-spec movie camera worth over £800. Application forms are on the website, and the deadline for sending in your film to enter the competition is the last day of July, it's May now, so you'll have the whole of June to be working on it. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. And what are the judges looking for? Well, although we choose very topical issues like the environment, we're not looking for propaganda, you know, trying to get people to do something. <laughs> Instead, we're looking for a new angle, a fresh way of looking at a theme. And of course, because it's a short film festival, it's not really about a fully worked story with well-rounded characters. It's more about good photography, conveying things visually. Mm. And who judges the films? A panel of three people who know a lot about film. We've used the same judges for many years and we're very happy with their expertise. One thing we probably will change next year, though, is we want to add another class and another prize for older filmmakers. We'll keep it at a maximum of ten minutes, though. The length works well for our festival. We also want to use different venues for the film shows, such as community centres and at least one school. It might make performances more accessible to a wider audience. We did explore the possibility of having late-night showings, but that's unlikely to happen in the coming year. So, as I say, if anyone's interested in submitting a film for our competition, go on to our website and you'll be able to access everything... That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will now hear a speaker talking about student loans. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. 
Thanks for turning up today, and welcome to this short talk on student loans. What you'll hear from me today are a few starting points, which should guide you in the right direction for what is suited for you. I'm assuming that most of you have an account at a bank or building society that you can draw funds from. These funds will either be your own or through a loan you may have with the bank. You may even have a credit card you can use. If you don't have a bank account, I suggest you open one with one of the major banks. It's the best option as you will find major banks have more outlets. Within the city and in close proximity to the university are HSBC in City Plaza, Barclays in Ragdell Square, National Westminster in Preston Park, and Halifax in Hope Street. At this stage, I just want to inform international students that not all the services available for resident students will be available to you. As international students, you need to provide documentation stating that you have funds available to see you through the duration of your study. Different banks have different policies, so search out the one that will benefit you the most. You will also need to provide a photocopy of your passport and certification of your enrolment in the university. The most common way of taking out a student loan is either through the university or through a banking institution. If you decide to go with the university, again, you need to supply a certification of enrolment and passport if you're an international student, or if you're a resident, you will only need the enrolment details. One word of warning is that you need to be clear on the interest you will be paying on your loan. The interest level through some universities is almost as much as the loan itself. So, if you borrow ten thousand pounds, you might have to pay back close to twenty. Also, with student loans through the university, you have a limited time to pay them back, and this time is not flexible. You might have only one year. You might have five. As I said, different universities have different policies. This university, for example, has an interest rate of twenty-three point five percent. It's quite high, but not as high as many of the other larger universities. The other option is to take out a loan through your bank. You will find that most banks will have lower interest rates than the university. They average roughly between fourteen point five to eighteen point five percent. Banks also give you an option of over how many years you want to make repayments. You can basically choose to pay it back in a year or in ten, even more if you are finding it difficult. Make sure you have an account with the bank you decide to go with. Either a current account or a savings account is enough. With either of these accounts, you can use your card to make withdrawals and deposits from automatic teller machines at any time, and make payments over the internet if you choose. You can also use Maestro, one of the systems which automatically take the money from your account at a time that you have specifically stated, and deposits it into a nominated account of your choice. You might decide to have one hundred and fifty pounds taken out each month. And each month, this is what will happen. Also, check what fees apply with what services. Some services are free of charge, but they are few and far between. Okay, so that's all from me. If there are any questions related to what I've covered today, please raise your hand. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.